this is Isolde and I wanted to guide you through the primary series of Ashtanga Yoga. We start at the top of our mat with mountain pose, shoulders away from the ears, chin parallel to the ground, eyes focused straight ahead, feet together, legs together, toes touching. Bring your arms up overhead, palms together, look up, exhale, fold forward over your legs, Bend your knees if you need to, to protect your back. And if your hamstrings are aching, feel free to bend the knees more. Tuck the head in. Inhale, look up. Lengthen the spine. Shift the weight slightly forward. Bend the knees again if that helps you. Exhale, curl your head in. Fold forward. Four, bend your knees so much that you can place the palms alongside your feet and coming into plank one leg at a time. Shoulders are over the ears, fingers are well spread and activate your quadriceps. Bend the knees to the ground if you need to. If plank is too much, that's perfectly fine. Coming into the yogi push-up, which is called Chaturanga Dandasana. Shift your weight forward. Hug your elbows into your rib cage and keep the knees on the ground if that makes it easier. We're coming into upward facing dog, which is our which is our back bend. Press firmly on the palms of your hands. Flip your feet so the tops of your feet are on the floor. Thighs are off the mat if you can. Otherwise, come into cobra. This is baby cobra where your thighs and your, your feet are on the floor. Next, downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, gaze towards your navel, press the palms down, lift the hips to the sky, keep the knees bent if your hamstrings are tight, and we're breathing in and out of your nose for five breaths. Remember, at any time, you can always drop to your knees and go to child's pose if you need to rest. That's perfectly fine. Now, gazing between the hands, walk your feet gently forward. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, tuck the head in, bend the knees if you need to. And on the inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Keep your back straight. Bend the knees to prevent the injury. Palms together, gaze at your thumbs. Exhale, arms by the side. We return to mountain pose. Number two, inhale, arms up overhead, look up. Exhale, swan dive down, tuck your head in. Remember to bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, look up, lengthen your spine, gentle stretch. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, moving into plank, one leg at a time. Remember, you can always drop to the knees if you need to. We're going to move into either upward facing dog or to cobra. I'm demonstrating cobra for any people that upward facing dog is too much. The tops of the feet are on the ground, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, downward dog. Tuck your toes, push your hips up to the sky gently. Look towards your belly or your legs. Press your fingers flat down. The feet are slightly apart. Engage your quadriceps. I know it's a lot to take in, but just try your best. We're here for five breaths. Inhale, exhale. Remember, doing the best you can. If you ever need to take a break, that's perfectly fine. Yoga is the union between the mind and body. So respect your boundaries, respect your limits, take it slow. This is the journey of a lifetime. Inhale, look forward, come forward to our forward bend. Gently elongate the spine. Now tuck the head back in. And now let's come back up. Bring the arms up overhead, palms together. And exhale back to mountain pose. Relax. Inhale, arms up overhead exhale swan dive down forward bend inhale look up lengthen the spine exhale fold forward moving into plank at your own pace knees on the ground if you need to chaturanga dandasana yogi push up upward facing dog or cobra exhale downward facing dog five breaths press the palms down press the fingers down keep lifting your hips to the sky as you activate the quadriceps 
Bend the knees if you need to, to elongate the spine more. Or if your back hurts, if your hamstrings hurt, doing the best you can. At any time, if you need to, bring your knees to the ground if you need to rest. No problem. Breathe in and out through your nose. Inhale, look forward, walk towards the hands. Inhale, arms up, overhead, palms together. Look up at the thumbs, reach up. Exhale, arms to the side of the body, mountain pose. Number four, arms up, overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Tuck the head in. Inhale, look up, fingertips on the floor. Bend your knees if you need to. Otherwise, hold on to the ankles or the calves, whatever you need to, to really elongate the spine. Tuck the head in, forward bend, and now moving into your plank. Exhale to your yogi push-up. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five breaths. Just imagine this is a meditation in motion. So making the movements graceful. Take your time. Don't rush. Feel free to stop the video at any time. If you need to go over the instructions or if you need a break, take your time. When you're in the class, it's often very hard to give instructions, individual instructions. So imagine this is your own private class. You can take your time. Walk forward to the forward bend. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward, tuck the head in. Inhale, bring the arms up, overhead, palms together. Look, at, look up at the thumbs. Exhale, arms to the side of the body, mountain pose. Sun Series B is coming up. Bend the knees so the fingertips gently brush the floor and arms come, op come up over the head so you're in like a chair pose. Exhale, forward bend, swan dive down, tuck the head in. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up and now move into your plank gently. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. In, exhale, downward facing dog. And now inhale, look between the hands. Bring the right foot between the hands. Left foot goes flat on the floor at a bit of an angle. The right knee, make sure it's bent over the ankle. And now adjust your hips so you can move that back foot forward slightly to have both hips facing the right knee. So it's quite a balancing act. So take your time. And when you're ready, both arms come up alongside the ears if you're either looking straight ahead or if you're balanced look up bring the hands to prayer position in front of your heart and now bring both palms alongside the foot move into plank to yogi push-up inhale upward dog or cobra exhale downward dog and now gently inhale look between the hands bring the left foot forward Arms up, press that right foot flat down, both hips turn to face the left knee, bring the palms together in front of the chest, hands to the ground, move into plank, into chaturanga dandasana, inhale upward facing dog, exhale downward facing dog. And we're here for five breaths. With Sun Series B, we're adding Ukatasana, which is the chair pose at the beginning, and we're adding the warrior one poses as well. So that's the only difference. And now look between your hands, walk forward, you look up, lengthen the spine, exhale, fold forward, tuck your head in, bend the knees gently, 
Bring the arms up over the head, arms by the ears. Look up to the thumbs, palms together. Exhale, arms to the side of the body. Samastitihi. Exhale, arms to the side of the ears. Look up to the thumbs. Ukatasana, chair pose, tuck your pelvis in. Exhale, swan dive down, tuck the head in. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up gently. Exhale, tuck the head in, fold forward. Bend the knees, right leg, left leg back into plank or drop the knees if you need to. Drop the knees if you need to and bring chest chin down or chaturanga up to you. Upward dog, straight to downward dog. Downward dog, we're moving into warrior one, but you can come into the lunge if warrior one is too difficult. That's just bringing the knee down and arms alongside the ears instead of warrior one. Come into your plank and then knees, chest, chin. If you can't do chaturanga yet, coming into baby cobra or upward dog straight into downward dog and what we did to the right side we're moving on to the left side your choice either knees down or warrior one up to you only one breath move into plank chaturanga or baby cobra upward dog or baby cobra downward dog five breaths Look up, walk between your hands or bend the knees and hop forward up to you. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward, tuck the head in. Bend the knees, Ukatasana. Inhale, straighten the legs, arms by the side, Samastitihi. Inhale, Ukatasana, chair pose. Exhale, swan dive down, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend the knees and move into plank. Your choice, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or baby cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Move into your variation of warrior one on the right. Inhale, only one breath. Exhale. Exhale, move through the vinyasa, your own variations. Plank, upward dog, downward dog. Only one breath. Moving on to the left side, the warrior one variation of your choice. One breath. And moving into the vinyasa at your own pace now. Plank. Chaturanga, upward dog, downward dog, five breaths. If you need to bend your knees to lengthen your spine, please do that. If you ever need to go to child's pose to take a rest, feel free to do that. Always listen to your body. You are the teacher. I'm only the messenger. And now look between the hands, bend the knees, hop forward gently. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ukatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, chair pose, Ukatasana. Exhale, swan dive down, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. Moving into the vinyasa, jump back, chaturanga, inhale, upward dog, 
Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, warrior one of your choice. One breath. Exhale, move through the vinyasa at your own pace. Plank, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. And now we're going to the left side. Warrior one of your choice. One breath. Moving through the vinyasa gracefully, mindfully. Plank, chaturanga. Upward dog, downward dog, five breaths. And as always, remember, you can always come into child's pose if you need a break. You can bend your knees and bring your forehead to the ground. If you need to, always remember, you're the teacher. This is your class, not mine. Thank you. And now look between your hands, bend the knees, hop forward if you can, or walk forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ukatasana, look up, exhale, Samastitihi. Bend the knees, Ukatasana, chair pose. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, look up, move into the vinyasa at your own pace. Plank, chaturanga, upward dog, downward dog, warrior one variation on the right side, arms up, look up, exhale, vinyasa at your own pace, plank, chaturanga, inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog, Moving to the left side, left foot forward, warrior one variation, arms up. And moving through the vinyasa at your own pace, I'll let you take the pace yourself. Take your time, move gracefully. When you arrive at downward dog, five breaths. And now look at your hands, bend the knees, hop forward or walk forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Ukatasana, chair pose. Exhale, Samastitihi. Now we are finished with the Sun Series part. So we're going to come into our next pose, which is hands on the hips. Puff the chest out, look forward, exhale, swan dive down. With your two big toes, pistol grip your big toe. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. And now exhale, fold forward, bring the elbows out. And if you need to bend your knees, feel free to. We're here for five breaths. One breath is inhale and exhale. This is lengthening our hamstrings which with so much sitting down are getting very tight or excellent for cyclists and runners and walkers folding forward or basically anybody who sits down and watches tv or watches youtube fantastic to do this every day inhale look up lengthen the spine bend the knees if you need to to lengthen the spine a bit more if you feel like the hamstrings are killing you coming into gorilla bring both hands underneath your feet so you're stepping on your palms as much as you can if you need to bend your knees to in order to 
stick both palms underneath you so you're standing on your palms. Tuck your head in, fold forward five breaths. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Take the hands out, bring the hands on the hips and come up with a straight spine. Bend the knees if you need to, if you feel you're locking your knees or your hamstrings are killing you. Bring your back up and arms by the side. Coming into prayer position at the heart, we're going to turn to the right and we're going to come into our triangle series. So both feet are parallel, arms out to the side of the body. Tuck in your pelvis right now and turn the right foot to face out 90 degrees. Left foot is going to turn to face 45 degrees. And you're going to look towards the right middle finger. That's your drishti. Shift your weight forward. Turn the hips so the hips are facing the wall, not the floor pistol grip your big toe or hold on to the ankle or the upper calf if you need to the whole idea is that the chest is facing the wall in front of you rather than the floor and slowly you're looking up towards the thumb take your time keep your balance and notice your breath slowly come up and switch the feet we're going to repeat this on the left side so left foot at 90 degrees make sure the the ball of the left foot is right in between the the arch of the right foot that's the like alignment for you and you're repeating the same thing on the other side and you're just making sure to Tilt the pelvis, tilt the chest so it's facing the wall and not the floor. So you're really getting a very good hip opening. Do the best you can, whether you're holding on to the big toe, the ankle, or the upper calf. Up to you. Breathe through your nose. Now begin to gaze at the foot, look up, bring both arms up, we're coming into reverse triangle. So we're bringing the left hand alongside the ear, turning both hips to face the feet. So flip the feet enough so both hips are facing forward. You're bringing that left hand either to the inside of the right foot, or if you can, holding onto the ankle, or if you have the flexibility you're bringing that left hand to the outside of the right foot now do what you can without injuring your knee just do a little bit at a time bring that right arm up if you can taking this step by step just do what you can don't ever push yourself too hard just pay attention to your body and this is reverse triangle So we're working on opening the chest, the pelvis to face the opposite wall. And as you can see, it's very challenging. Inhale, bring both arms back up, back to center. Now reverse. So both hips facing the left foot and bring the right hand either on the floor, alongside the foot, or on the ankle or on the leg and only if you have the flexibility you're putting it on the outside of the foot and you're attempting to bring the opposite arm up so keep both feet planted by pressing down on the ball and the arch of the foot elongate the hamstrings by strengthening the calves suck in the stomach to protect the spine and breathe in and out the nose
And now come back up gracefully, arms up, arms, hands to the hips, and bring both feet to Samastitihi, mountain pose. Come into prayer position. We're going to come into a wider stance. Coming into Tita Parsva Konasana, which is you're going to bring your arms out to the side. You're going to flip the right foot. You're going to turn the left foot to 45 degrees, bend the right knee so the knee is over the ankle. Always notice your alignment. First, bring your elbow onto your, your thigh. If that's okay, you're going to bring the right hand on the outside of the right foot, bringing that left arm over the heel, and you're pressing that left foot flat on the floor, so press on the arch. And this is Uttita Parsva Konasana for five breaths. If this is too much, just come into the lunge with the knee on the floor. Remember, you can always adjust this or if you can't do it for as many breaths, no problem. Do the best you can. It's very challenging. We're coming to the other side, so come back up, reverse the feet, and so now bringing the left hand on the outside of the left foot, right arm up, overhead, gazing up at the thumb, and remembering to have both feet planted on the ground. Strengthen your abs by sucking the belly in, and keep breathing through your nose, mouth is closed. Gaze up, come back up, straighten the legs, and now we're coming to reverse Uttita Parsva Konasana, which is extremely challenging. So we'll take it step by step. Bring the right foot to 90 degrees, bring both hips to face the right knee, and now the left hand we're aiming at bringing outside of the right foot. But if that doesn't happen, you can bring it on the inside of the right foot or you can just come into the lunge. Just try the best you can here. This is reverse Uttita Parsva Konasana. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can bring that knee down to make it easier for you as well. And you can bring your hands to prayer position to begin to stretch the body, to prepare for the flexibility to come. This is a journey of a lifetime so just remember if it doesn't happen today just keep on practicing as much as you can at least three times a week or four times a week if you can daily even if you only do half hour a day of the sun series you are gaining benefits begin to come up and repeat on the opposite side so Bring both hips to face the opposite knee and now prepare where you're going to bring your hand, whether on the inside or outside of the foot or if you're going to keep your knee down, do that up to you. Come back up, straighten the legs, arms at the side. Come back to Samastitihi, prayer position, hands by the side. Arms coming out. We're going to begin Prasarita Paratanasana, which is wide-legged forward fold. So there's several variations. We're going to practice. Bring your hands on your hips. Inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale, swan dive down, fold forward. Bring the hands between the feet. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward and widen the legs as much as you need to to begin to attempt bringing the head flat on the floor. And if that's not possible, don't worry. You're doing the best you can. Don't injure yourself. Don't do more than you can. Breathe through the nose.
Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine and adjust your feet if you need to, to come up, hands on the hips, come up, bring the arms out to the side of the body, again, hands on the hips, and this time we're keeping hands on the hips as we look up and we're folding forward, bringing our elbows to look up, as we fold forward, we're just holding our hands on our hips, and five breaths again, in and out the nose. Inhale, come up. Yes, release the arms. Arms up, hands on, hands behind the back. This time interlace the fingers if you can or hold on to the elbows. Whatever you can do. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Exhale, swan dive down and bring the arms up over the head. Aim to bring the hands eventually to the floor. I know it's quite a journey. It's easier in the steam room. Five breaths. Bring the arms up overhead. Hands on the hips. Inhale, arms out to the side. Hands on the hips again. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Fold forward gracefully and pistol grip the big toe if you can. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look up. Exhale, fold forward. Five breaths. Inhale, lengthen the spine, bring the hands back on the hips, come up with a straight spine. And now bring the left foot to the right foot for Samastitihi, mountain pose, hands at prayer position, arms down. Bringing the hands to prayer position, we're going to bring the feet again to like a three foot stance, not as wide as the Pasarita Paratanasana. Coming into Parsvottanasana, bring the hips to face the left foot, hands at prayer position. You're going to gently start to bring the arms behind the back, interlace the fingers if you can. Make a prayer position with the hands if you can, or hold on to the elbows. This is up to you. And you're going to bring the prayer position up alongside the shoulder girdle if your flexibility allows so you choose where how to manage your hands don't worry inhale look up lengthen the spine exhale swan dive down fold forward try to bring the nose to the knee the chest on the thighs but if that doesn't happen no problem Inhale, slowly lift up with a straight spine, bend the knee if you need to, and reverse the sides. Keep your hands where they are, and inhale, lengthen the spine, look up, just doing the best you can, fold forward at your own pace. Don't worry if your head doesn't touch the leg not important just getting the stretch and with time the body will change it just takes discipline dedication and commitment to your health inhale 
Inhale, bring the head back up, lengthen the spine back to standing gracefully and come back into Samastitihi, Mountain Pose. We are coming into Utita Hasta Parangustasana, which is extended hand to big toe pose, which is working on our balance. So please come towards a wall just so you have the support. Bring your right knee up to your chest first. So make sure that you feel centered when you do this. You're balancing on one leg. Notice your posture. Notice the standing leg is firm. Grab the big toe or the big foot. This is up to you depending on your posture. Left hand is on the hips. And when you're ready, you're going to extend that right leg out as much as you can. And you're gonna breathe five breaths through that. If at any time you need to use the wall for balance, feel free to do so. If you fall out of the posture, just come back into it gracefully, mindfully, step by step. Don't rush. If you can, you will attempt to gently bend towards the right leg but if not just keep holding the leg and slowly we're going to turn the right leg towards the side of the body try the best you can so if your leg is bent don't worry it's only the effort that's important and you're gracefully looking towards the other side as much as you can so keep sucking in the belly to activate the abs press on the left foot engage your quadriceps breathe deeply and bring that right look back right leg back forward and now hold it up let go of let go of the toe and hold it up there for as long as you can and slowly lowering down we're going to bring the left leg bend the left knee up to the chest this is the first part of the posture if this is all you want to do this is absolutely perfect we need to work on our balance and our strength together remember you can always hold on to the wall if you need to you can hold on to your foot if you need to or pistol grip the big toe while the hand is on the hip unless you're using the wall remember all these steps are important to gradually build your strength this doesn't happen overnight it takes discipline hold on to the big toe and remember some one side is always more flexible than the other so don't criticize yourself you're doing the best you can and now if you can bring that leg out to the side and look towards the other side do the best you can breathe through the nose mouth is closed to preserve energy bring the leg back in front and try to hold it up and as you can see one side is different than the other it's all abdominal work to hold that leg up in the air and it's hardcore <laughs> bring and bring the leg down next is Ardha Bada Padmottanasana which is half bound lotus standing forward bend so you're trying to gently bring the top of the foot to turn up i know that's very confusing bringing the top of the foot towards the hip crease or towards the ankle you can stop there if this is too much for your knees you have to be very careful with your knees then you're bringing your your arm behind your back and trying to hold on to the big toe so like a bound angle and then bringing the hand to fold forward so you don't have to do each of these steps just do what you can because you don't want to injure your knee Gently start to come up slowly and release. And you're going to repeat on the other side. Remember, just do take your time 
and you're working first into half lotus so this is standing half lotus this is just working on your knees so if this is all you're going to do then we're working on the bound angle holding onto the foot or to the big toe up to you and then with the hand that's free you're going to start to fold forward and remember just take it step by step if you have trouble folding forward then just stand instead inhale come back up to standing and release the lotus pose come back to standing come back to samastitihi and we're going to begin some vinyasa arms up exhale swan dive down inhale lengthen the spine look up exhale move into plank exhale chaturanga inhale upward dog exhale downward dog inhale bend the knees hop forward ukatasana chair pose breathe in and out through your nose as we're in chair pose strengthen your quadriceps inhale fold forward tuck the head in inhale lengthen exhale tuck the head in move in through the vinyasa plank chaturanga inhale upward dog exhale downward dog Inhale, right foot forward, left foot down, warrior one. Five breaths, look straight ahead or look towards the thumbs, palms together. Remember to keep the feet flat on the floor for your balance. And now gazing up at the thumbs, that's your drishti start to just looking up at the thumbs turn to the other side if you can without looking down look at your thumbs and you're repeating this on the other side of your body don't worry if you had to, to look warrior one on the other side warrior two lengthen the legs a little bit more so taking a longer stance Knee is over the ankle, but the arms over the side, and the chest is facing the side wall, but your knee is bent over the ankle, so your chest is not facing your knee. And now, warrior two to the other side, so gazing at the, at the thumb in front of you, at the hand in front of you, but the chest is facing the side wall, while the knee is over the ankle, arms up. windmill the hands alongside the feet to move into our vinyasa plank chaturanga inhale upward dog exhale downward dog and now bend the knees and we're going to hop into a cross-legged position in front of our mat or just walk and sit down do that again so come into downward dog and now look between the hands and try to hop forward and bring your cross-legged in between so your legs shoot out in front of you it takes a little bit of practice don't worry we're coming into staff pose which is legs straight in front of you feet are flexed so the toes are turned to look towards you back is straight you can bend your knees if you need to to keep your back straight hands by your side palms pressing down chin towards the chest and you're breathing for five breaths
And now bringing the hands, pistol grip the big toe if you can, and you're going to fold forward. If you can grab the big toe, or if you need to bend the knees to keep your back lengthened, no problem. You can bend the knees if you need to hold on to the ankles or to the calves. We're coming into a forward bend. This is Paschimottanasana or seated forward bend. And now you're either going to stay where you are, or if you can, you're going to bring your hands to touch the, the sides of the feet. Interlace the fingers behind the feet if you can. You're going to, or if you can, hold on to the wrist behind the feet. This is all up to your flexibility. Do the best you can. And this is Paschimottanasana, variation B. Fold forward. And now we're going to come back gracefully into our vinyasa. So you're going to cross your legs, bend the knees, and you're going to come back into your plank. See, I'm still struggling pa to plank, chaturanga, upward dog, downward dog. And I come into reverse plank pose which is Parsval Tanasana which is going to engage every muscle in your body so we're going to take this in steps you're going to come to lie down on your back bring your hips and pelvis up for a bridge you can stay there or stretch straight in your arms and bring your whole pelvis up in the air and bend back last variation of this is that you're coming to Lift your hips and pelvis up, straightening the legs, pressing the feet flat on the floor, and you're balancing on your hands. Pelvis is lifted up as you gaze behind you. So this is, it's up to you whether you want to do bridge or a gentle table or the full pose. Coming into the vinyasa, take your time. Moving into plank, chaturanga, inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, look between the hands, bend the knees, hop forward. We're coming into Jano Shirshasana, which is seated forward bend. Instead of rounding your back, lengthen your spine and fold forward from the hip crease. So you're going to bring your arms up overhead, palms touching, and bring the arms up over the leg, and you're going to Find your variation to fold forward. Like I hold on to my wrist and I put that behind the foot, but you don't need to do that and you're folding forward. And you're releasing the arms back overhead, arms by the side of the body, gracefully moving into your vinyasa, moving into your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. And moving into the next side by hopping forward. Janu Shirshasana on the left side. So repeating the same movements, but just on the other side. Inhale, arms up overhead and arms over the legs. Fold forward. Bring your arms up overhead, arms by the side of the body, and get ready to do another vinyasa. So Ashtanga Yoga is a lot of vinyasa work, so take it as slow as you need to, to keep going. Plank, to Chaturanga, to Upward Dog, to Downward Dog, all at your own pace. And hopping forward for our next posture.
Our next posture is called Trianga Mukai Kaipada Pashimottanasana, which is an intense stretch. So if you want to omit this stretch, you can do it no problem at all. With Dandasana Staff Pose, you're folding your right leg at the knee, placing the foot besides the right hip joint. You're finding your balance, keeping the knees together, but relaxing the shoulder. You're going to bring your arms up overhead and bring the arms over the leg so remember the right foot is towards the hips it's bent so if this is too much for you you're not gonna do this try the best you can inhale look up lengthen the spine and slowly come out of that gracefully and move through your vinyasa move into your plank exhale your chaturanga inhale your upward dog exhale your downward dog and you're going to come to cross-legged and you're going to repeat on the other side so you're bending that left leg so the foot is by the hip crease both knees are together and the this leg that it's extended the foot is flexed arms over the head and you're folding forward over the leg take your time Inhale, bring the arms up over the head, arms by the side, release the foot gracefully, coming into your vinyasa at your own pace. Always try the jump back, it builds a lot of strength but takes time. I'm not able to do it yet. Plank to chaturanga to upward dog to downward dog. And now you're going to bend the knees, hop forward into cross-legged position, coming into our next posture, which is Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana, which is half-bound lotus forward bend, and Dandasana, which is the staff pose. You're bending the left knee as in the warm-up position to bring the leg into half-lotus pose, hold the left foot in close to the navel, and let the left knee move forward as it comes down towards the earth. Bring the outer ankle to the very top of the right thigh. So this is like the half lotus. And now you're going to fall forward. If this is too much for your knees or your hips, please omit this pose or do an earlier variation. There's no need to, to do this. Only if your body is open enough to always take your time because you don't want to risk injuring your knees or, or hurting your hips. We're going to gently come back up, take your time. If ever you need to come into child's pose because you're tired of vinyasa, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we're moving into vinyasa gently, gracefully. Take your time at your own pace. When you're at downward dog, gracefully either walk forward or bend the knees and hop forward and proceed on the other side to either try Ardhabhada Padma Paschimottanasana, which is half lotus forward bend, seated forward bend, or just do Janu Shirshasana, which is just the seated forward bend. Remember, we need to protect the knee. So if ever you feel that it's painful, that's the warning, that's the sign to not do this. Fold forward, please. And coming back out of this into vinyasa or child's pose, up to you. Remember, this is your class. Be gentle, be mindful, and you can always take a break if you need to. Vinyasa, when you're at downward dog, either walk forward or bend the knees and come into seated position for our next posture. This is Janu Shirshasana B, which is a seated forward bend where you're bending one leg and bringing the heel of that foot underneath you. So basically you're sitting on the heel and you're trying to keep your hips facing forward and you're folding forward over your extended leg. Now, if the bent knee is not really resting on the floor, feel free to place a blanket or a block under it to help and support and relax the hip 
fold forward at your own pace and if this is too much for you then just do janu shirshasana a remember to always listen to your body don't do any poses that you feel are going to injure you because you are responsible for what you do with your body so take it easy and if you need to take a break feel free to go to child's pose or lie down on your back if you're ready we're going to come into another plank because this is all part of the ashtanga primary series inhale plank to upward dog to downward dog and when you're ready bend your knees hop forward and we're going to come into janu shirshasana c if this pose is just simply too much or too much stress on the knee do not worry at all you can work on your butterfly pose which is just bringing both of the soles of the feet close to the groin and opening the hips that way rather than janu shirshasana c because i know this is a very very challenging posture i'm turning my body so you can see what i'm doing that the top of the foot is practically at the groin and the hip crease of the leg and so i'm balanced the, the foot is balanced and the knee is down so this can be very tricky for the knee so don't do this at all if your knees feel compromised protect your knees at all cost only if you've been practicing ashtanga yoga for a long time or have a very very flexible body from dance or gymnastics i would recommend doing this posture right away okay arms up over the head and folding forward over the leg And now gently bring the arms up over the head and come out of the posture very gently protect your knee coming into another vinyasa i know it's a lot of vinyasas coming into your plank when you're ready your chaturanga inhale your upward dog exhale your downward dog and now gently bend the knees, cross the legs. Now we're coming to the most challenging and most scary posture of the standing poses of the primary series, the Janu Shirshasana C. So try this very slowly and gently and pay attention that this is all coming from the hips and never the knee. You're inhaling, you're bending the left leg and with the support of the hands, you're twisting and turning the foot to place the toes down and the heel on the right groin. Place the hands behind the hips to lift the body up and bring it a little forward to bring the heel in line with the toes. Now, if this sounds too much, just omit this whole pose because this is a very challenging and normally very advanced forward bend. So just take your time. This is for the ankles, the hamstrings. And the spine come back into vinyasa slowly or either child's pose plank to chaturanga to upward dog or to downward dog and inhale bend the knees come to sit cross-legged and now we're coming into Marichasana A, which first you're sitting in staff pose, Dandasana. Bend your right knee and place your foot flat on the mat at a comfortable distance away from your hip. Ground through both sitting bones and lengthen your spine. Place your right hand or fingertips behind you for support. As you inhale, raise your left arm, exhale and twist your upper back to the right. Bring your left arm across the right leg pressing the left upper arm against the outer right knee bend the left elbow point your fingertips to the ceiling and keep that hand active with each inhalation press the sitting bones into the floor and lengthen the spine with each exhale see if you can twist your body a little bit forward as you fold forward just do the best you can omit any steps of this that are just too challenging for you 
Remember, take it easy. Coming out of this gracefully and taking your time, you're moving forward into another vinyasa or child's pose or lying down. This is all up to you, okay? Pay attention to your body. Moving into your vinyasa if you'd like. Plank to chaturanga to upward dog and to downward dog. And bending the knees, moving forward to marichasana A on the other side. So again, we're coming to to bend the left knee and placing the foot flat on the mat at a comfortable distance away from the hip. Feel that you're sitting on the sit bones very tall. Lengthen the spine. Place your left hand or fingertips behind you for support. And as you, ex as you inhale, raise that right arm and exhale and twist the upper back to the left. Bring the right arm across and fold forward. And now coming out of the posture, remember to just take this in steps, move through the vinyasa or into child's pose. When you reach downward dog, we're going to be coming into Marichasana B. And now Marichasana B. Sit with your legs stretched in front of you and bend your left knee and place your ankle high on your right thigh. Bend your right leg, bringing your foot flat on the floor near the right buttock. Lift your hips and shift forward so that your left knee rests on the floor. Reach your right arm forward with an exhale, bringing your armpit against your shin. Rotate your arm to reach your hand behind your back. Reach your left arm behind your back with an exhale, Grab hold of your left wrist. Draw your belly in and fold deeper with an exhale, bringing your forehead to the floor. Again, just do the best you can. And if any of this is painful, then omit those parts. Practice yoga at your own discretion and always paying attention to your boundaries and to your limits, respecting your body. Remember, you are the teacher, so never do anything that is painful or stressful for your body only take it step by step coming out of this gracefully mindfully slowly we're going to come into our vinyasa come into it at your own pace or go into child's pose Marichasana B on the other side. So you're coming into your half lotus first. And if that's not possible, then you're just going to aim at working at this or just coming to put the foot alongside the, the thigh. So this is a wonderful hip opener if it works for you. As we fold forward with one leg bound in lotus with the thighs at a 45 degree angle, we experience a softening of the hip. Similar to Marichasana A, this pose can also help stretch the shoulder of the wrapping arm. It's very challenging for those with tight hips, this pose. So as you can see, one side is always more flexible than the other, but you just do the best you can. And you're coming out of this gracefully, mindfully, slowly and coming into your vinyasa or child's pose at your own pace. And when you're ready, coming into Marichasana, C. As you inhale, raise your left arm. Exhale and twist your upper back to the right. Bring your left arm across the right leg, pressing the left upper arm against the outer right knee. Bend the left elbow, point your fingertips to the ceiling and keep that hand active. 
Try the best you can. Breathe in and out through your nose and slowly release and come into vinyasa or child's pose at your own pace. Hop forward. You're going to reach around the knee and bend the elbow to pull the torso towards the thigh. Press the knee into the chest. Then push the edge of the foot into the hand and feel how it helps to twist the body, to detox the body. Press the other hand to the floor a few inches behind the sacrum and straighten the elbows to lift the chest. Then try going forward with your hand to increase the twist as you become more flexible keep the outer elbow against the knee keep the knee and thigh stable and press the elbow against the side of the foot to twist the body join the hands first by locking the fingers together then by clasping the wrist don't forget the story of the straight leg at this point, there are still more postures in the Ashtanga Yoga Primary Series, but I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to go straight into Urva Dhanurasana, which is the wheel pose in Sanskrit, which is an upward facing bow or an extreme backward bend. So it's opening up your chest, toning your thighs, stomach and arms. Practicing it will engage your entire body. It'll help get rid of sadness and depression or at least release it. So to begin, you're lying down on your back. Bend your knees so that your feet are flat on the yoga mat. Keep your feet parallel and in line with your sitting bones. Place each hand on the yoga mat just above the shoulder. Press into your hands and lift your body off the yoga mat, resting the crown of your head slightly on the floor press into your feet and push both legs up your pelvis and your back should come up off the mat activate your inner thighs and push more into your feet so more of the weight is on the palms to lift your hips higher you're maintaining the strength and stability in your arms by continuing to press your palms down let your head hang loose in a neutral way so you don't strain your neck and to come out, you're just lowering your arms and legs at a slow pace. So this is fantastic for energy and heat to strengthen the arms, the legs, the spine and your abs. It's opening your chest. It's stretching your shoulders. It's stretching your hip flexors and ab muscles. It's strengthening your glutes and thighs and increasing spine flexibility. So I'm doing it three times, but it's up to you how many times you feel like doing this if this is too much for you you're welcome to do bridge so those who are pregnant or who have high blood pressure or who have carpal tunnel syndrome or heart issues or back problems wouldn't be doing this now we're coming into sheer sasana which is forward bend so extending the legs in front of you feet flexed you're just simply folding forward bend the knees if your hips are very tight And coming up, hopefully you're feeling fantastic by this point and not too disappointed that we're not going on for two hours here. So you're going to come to lie down on your back, arms by your side, bring both legs up overhead and then kick the legs up over your head for plow pose and bring your shoulders closer under your, your back, hands to support your lower back, elbows close together, and this is shoulder stand, our first inversion. So if you're on your menstrual cycle, I don't recommend you doing that because it's going against the blood flow. Shoulders 
shoulder stand is called Sarvangasana. So you're here for several breaths. This is wonderful to really turn the blood circulation upside down. And this is called the queen of all yoga postures. Brings build strength and flexibility it improves your digestion can enhance your lymphatic system relieve stress and anxiety can reduce fatigue stay up for as long as you can come down into plow pose gently if you can bend the knees to cover your ears And interlace your fingers behind your back. And slowly, gently lower your spine down. And we'll do a little bit of ab work to the count of 10, lowering the legs down with straight legs. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, not quite 10, but, and now coming into our Matsyandrasana, which is our fish pose, which is the counter posture to Sarvangasana. Prop up on your upper elbows and bring the crown of your head to the floor as you, as you thrust your chest up and look back behind you. And now slowly coming out of this posture, coming up to sit up. And now we're going to come into headstand, which is called Shirsasana. So you're coming to sit on your heels. That's the first step. You're going to bend your arms, holding onto the elbows and bringing your forearms close to the knees. Never let this separate. Create the triangle by interlacing the fingers. And so that's your base, your elbows close to your knees and the interlaced fingers. Bring the crown of your head towards the space of the interlaced fingers. And now elongate the shoulders and the elbows. So press on the elbows and straighten the legs. And now bend the knees and slowly straighten the legs. Take this in steps. If that's not happening, don't jerk into the position. It will happen naturally with practice and discipline and time. This is called Shir Shasana, our headstand. So the benefits of headstand is that it's strengthening the core, the upper body, the back and the legs. And again, it's bringing a lot of blood flow. Slowly come down. I'm going to demonstrate how to come into headstand against the wall. So you're going to bring your body to face the wall. Bend the arms, hold on to your elbows, place the elbows near the knee so they're touching and the interlaced fingers are against the wall. So you're bringing your back as close to the wall so you have that support and then you're bringing your feet up the wall and straightening your legs slowly that way. Take it step by step. And little by little, walk your feet away from the wall or keep the feet on the wall. And slowly come out by walking the feet down the wall. Bend the knees into the chest and slowly, gracefully lower down and come into your child's pose slowly. I'm going to begin to close the series by coming into a cross-legged position. If you can do lotus 
Padmasana or half lotus come into that. Otherwise, just come into a cross-legged position to seal all the energy that we've raised, that we've activated all the neurotransmitters in our body and the chakras are all going to be balanced. So don't just run off after this. We need to do our Padmasana or coming to sit cross-legged. If you're coming into full Padmasana, full lotus, you're basically just going to bring the right arm behind your back and with your right hand grab hold of your left big toe and the left arm is going to reach back and grab hold of the right big toe and then you will fold forward. just doing the best you can and if this is not possible don't worry And now come up. If you're in full lotus, you're going to bring your arms alongside your body and press on your arms, lift your body up off the ground and you're going to breathe in and out through your nose for as many breaths as you can. It's very, very challenging. If you're sitting cross-legged, prepare to come down for Shavasana, deep relaxation, which will seal the practice. aiming for 25 breaths and now I'm coming to lie down in Shavasana, deep relaxation. Lie down, let your feet flop to the side, arms by the side, palms facing up, close your eyes and let go. This is so important to seal the energy.
Slowly bend the knees, turn to the right side, make a little pillow with your arm and close your eyes as you lay flat in a little womb-like position. Come up to sit cross-legged, maintaining your peace. Close your eyes and we'll sit still for a little meditation just taking inventory of how you feel, how your new energy is. It has been a privilege and an honor to share with you. I hope you feel wonderful today. God bless you. Thank you very much.